Hi, this is Darwin, co-founder of Good Guide here today to talk about cell phones. Now, cell phones are pretty amazing. They're basically a supercomputer with a camera, a phone, a GPS, video, all these things, all shrunk down to fit in your pocket so you can drive 70 miles an hour down the road, talking to somebody, Google mapping, GPSing, listening to music, all at the same time. Now, to get that amazing technology down in this tiny little package is, first of all, some amazing innovation but also some materials and some processes that actually may be problematic. So I want to talk today about what's actually inside your cell phone and what are the top five issues you should think about related to cell phones. First issue, the chemicals in your cell phone. To get the metals and the minerals and the, all those printed circuit boards and the plastics all in the small package and so they, for instance, don't light on fire, we add chemicals like brominated flame retardants to make the full package work. It added to the circuit boards, added to the plastics, added to the cables to make this condensed computer not get too hot. Those BFRs, brominated flame retardants, also are persistent, bioaccumulative, and toxic chemicals, which some forms of them get carcinogenic and also cause immune system problems. So BFRs really need to be out of cell phones. Second, metals. Tin, tungsten, Tantalum, the three T's of cell phones. The tin is on your solder for your circuit board. The tungsten actually helps to vibrate, that great vibrate mode. And the tantalum is used for the capacitors, which store the electricity to hold your battery charge and to hold the energy. Now, the tantalum is a problematic because it comes from coltan, which is mined sometimes from the Congo, where there's a civil war going on. And some of those minerals coming to us not only have environmental problems of mining and smelting them, but have social problems. Our coltan, which makes our tantalum, is actually fueling a civil war, leading to a lot of violence and death. So we want to get those conflict minerals also out of our cell phones. Third, radiation. This thing actually has a radio in it. The radio is what signals back and forth allows us to talk. That requires a radio transmitter and an antenna. Now there's a lot of controversy about the potential health impacts of that radiation, whether it's potentially affecting our brain, causing tumors, cancer. The science isn't there yet, authoritative, definitive science about the health impacts of this radiation, but a lot of people are concerned, so it's interesting to track the radiation levels through something called the specific absorption rate, the SAR, and look for lower SAR phones. Number four, we're looking at also the energy use. The charger behind my cell phone that keeps it charged at night really is where a lot of the overall carbon impact of your cell phone occurs is in the charging and particularly the standby mode. The efficiency of your charger is really important. So you got to look for phones that have energy efficient chargers. That's a big impact. And finally, there's workers behind these cell phones. People actually make them from mining the minerals to manufacturing to final assembly. We've seen a number of big problems. In the factory that produces the, the screens for my iPhone, uh, a chemical called N-hexane has exposed workers to a number of health problems. In other factories producing the chips for Samsung, we've seen workers getting cancer, leukemia, blood cancers, real health concerns and workplace uh, concerns for the workers. So, bottom line on these five issues. You should go look for phones, if you're concerned about these issues, that are BFR and PVC free. Get the worst chemicals out. No conflict minerals. Make sure your company you're supporting has a policy to get conflict minerals out of the phone. Low radiation, look for low SAR phones, low SAR phones. Four, look for energy efficient chargers. Look for the charger in standby mode, make sure it's good. Crazy that every phone has a different charger, but you still gotta look. And finally, at the end of its life, when you're done with your phone, make sure that company has a great take back program or use a site like gazelle.com to give this thing back, make sure someone else uses it, it gets recycled at the end of its life. Okay. We've studied these phones, the Good Guide scientists looked at over 570 phones, lots of different issues related to chemicals and energy and environmental and social and health impacts. Go to goodguide.com, look up your cell phone, find the phone that's best for you, find the phone that meets your needs and your concerns. Tell us what you think, tell us how it matches your concerns, and learn more at goodguide.com. Thanks very much.